Hi, I'm Ken Collins of Bad Shoe Production. Welcome to my video. It's actually going to be a two-part video on showing you how to use my sizer tools that I've recently produced. Now, when I, you know, I just gave it a name as a sizer tool. Um, these are on, these are tools made specifically for the AOD 4R70W Ford transmission, the later C6 transmission, and the FMX transmission. All three of these transmissions I have repair videos on and they all use a lip seal on at least one clutch. Now in the case of the uh, C6 it's only the kind of 77 and later C6s which uses a lip seal on the forward clutch piston only on the outside so I have a single tool just for that one. In the case of the FMX, I have a two-piece tool. The direct clutch uses an inner and outer lip type seal, so I have a sizer tool for that transmission. Now in the case of the AOD and the 4R70W, there's actually uh, three clutches that uses lip seals. And you also have a square cut seal on the reverse clutch. So therefore, in my six-piece kit that I have, I have a, just a normal seal protector for the reverse clutch. On those, you have that square cut seal. When you go into a cast drum, AODs used cast reverse drums from the beginning to about the last year that they produced. Uh, I think one of the last year uh, that they made them, they went to a stamp steel drum. Now, when they went to a stamp steel drum, you don't really need a seal protector for those because there's enough chamfer built into the uh, bottom of that bore and the uh, piston will go right down in it. Now in the case of the uh, AOD uh, intermediate piston, the forward piston, and the direct piston, they all use lip seals and I have a sizer tool for those. And when I say sizer tool, Everybody is familiar with regular seal protectors. Been around, you know, forever. And those are tools that you you put the lip seal on your piston. You take the tool, the seal protector, goes down over it. That kind of squeezes that lip uh, inward. You put the tool and the uh, piston down into the drum, and then you can slide it right in. But I don't know, it was sometime in the 90s, somebody came up with the clever idea that if you used a kind of a similar tool, but you squeeze that lip a little bit tighter and then freeze it, you know, in a freezer, you can pull it out and when it's cold like that, the lip will stay compressed in. And if you do it quick enough, you can go ahead and take the tool off and just drop it right down in the drum. So I decided, well, why not make a tool kit that's for the specific transmission? You have one just for the intermediate clutch on an AOD, you know, just for the, say, forward clutch on the C6. And then that way, you have a tool that's much smaller, and, uh, you know, it's, it, hopefully it's going to be very consistent. And in my feeling, when I've tested it and everything, I think it really works a lot better than a regular seal protector. I think this is a little bit more foolproof. Uh, the only drawback, I guess, is, of course, you have to freeze it. So, you know, if you have a time constraint, you know, maybe that's not that great an idea. But, uh, you know, if you're a hobbyist or, you know, you're building a transmission and, you know, it doesn't have to go tomorrow, you know, it's a regular project, then, you know, you can, I think you can survive for the 24 hours or something that you, you would uh, freeze it. I think two hours typically is good, depending on how good your freezer is. I just do it overnight myself. So in just a minute... We'll go over the, the table and I'll show you the six piece uh, system that I have for the AOD. Uh, today, I will actually put the uh, reverse clutch piston in using you know, the regular seal protector, which would do that at room temperature. We'll put that in, set it aside, and then I will put the intermediate piston with you know, new um, you know, piston seals, the forward clutch piston, and the direct clutch piston in the tool. I'll show you how to get it in the tool. Then we will freeze it, and then I'll do the second part of the video, you know, tomorrow or the next day, and we'll actually take those uh, pistons and put them in the drums. And in the case of the intermediate, of course, it goes into the uh, pump housing on the front of the transmission.
So let's go over here to the table and take a look. Okay, here on the table I have the parts. This is the uh, seal protector for the reverse clutch piston. This is the sizer for the uh, direct clutch. This is the inner and outer sizer tools for the forward clutch and the inner and outer for the intermediate clutch. And, uh, you know, here's some uh, freezer bags and here's the little tool that has a little wire on the end that's uh, used to uh, help get the um, seal lips down into the tool. The first thing I want to do is take the reverse piston and uh, I've already installed the inner seal. I'll go ahead and put the outer seal on. Remember this is a square cut o-ring seal like that. Now I'll lube it up. Normally you would use uh, transmission fluid but um, let me go ahead and move some of these out of the way. But uh, I'm going to use some uh, mineral oil because it's clear. It's a little less messy. Make sure I got the seals lubed up good. I'm also going to lube the inside of the tool itself. And the way you use this, um, the um, tool, of course, has a taper to it. It has a kind of a funnel shape. So the, the open part of the funnel will face up. We'll take the piston and I'll push it down into the tool. Now, as I go down in the tool, it will taper in and it will be a little bit more difficult to push it. And what I want to do is to push it all the way in so it's flush with the table. So get it in here like that all the way to the bottom. Just like that. And it's an interference fit, so it takes a little bit to get it in there. All right, I think I have it now. And you can see it's flush with the bottom. That's what I want. Now I'm going to put this aside for now. I'm going to let the um, the um, piston kind of set in the tool that will help uh, learn the uh, um, seal a little bit, uh, you know, to kind of stay in that compressed position. So let me set this aside. All right, then I'll use <coughs> the direct clutch sizer tool. I'll put a little lube in that. All right, that's good. Take the piston. This is the direct clutch piston. Put a new seal in it. Remember, lip side is always down. There we go. All right. And I'll put a little lube on that. And what I want to do is I want to put it in, you know, uh, you know, the bottom side going down into the tool. So therefore, the um, seal will have to kind of go across, um, you know, the little funnel shape that's in here. And sometimes you have to take your fingernail or thumbnail, kind of go around the edge to get it started. Let's see, right along here. I don't think I'm going to need the wire tool on this. I think I can just get it started. Let's see if I can. I'm having a little bit of trouble. So let me use the tool. Kind of go around it. Mm -hmm. And you definitely want to get it in there nice because you don't want the lip to flip backwards on you. There we go. That looks like that's it. And I want to bring it in till it's fully bottomed out. And that looks good. That's what I want. Now I'll put it in a freezer bag. I'll use a quart 
freezer bag for this one and put it in just like this and again make sure that it's in all the way put in the freezer bag seal it up and that's the way I want to put it in the freezer just like that flat all right, let me set that aside. Now I'll go to the forward clutch. Again, I've already put the, the inside seal in. And again, inside and outside seal faces down, lip side down. So I'll install the outer one. It's brand new seals. All right. Take that tool right here, lube it in there, lube the inside a little bit. Okay. Take the inner tool, this is the outer tool here, and this is the inner tool. Lube it up. Put some lube on the seals. like that and again the tool is made so there's kind of a funnel shape to it and we want to go down lip side in first top side bottom side the actual opposite way of way you would use a normal um, seal protector tool which you would put it in this way but this is a different breed here so we want to go this way what we want that to happen is when I get all the way to the bottom, at the very bottom of this tool, I have a slight taper toward the inside, and that helps push the uh, lip even tighter against the piston once I get it all the way fully in. Now I'll use the tool to kind of help me along a little bit. All right. There we go. I'm moving in there a little bit now and there we go all the way down all the way to the bottom of the tool and you can look at the bottom and you can see these little standoffs here and you'll see that the standoffs are right against the tool itself that's what I want to see alright now I'll put the inner one in and it's will come in from the bottom make sure I'm lubed up and usually I can kind of just do a little bit of a twisting motion and now the outside one may want to pop back out that's all right we'll get a little in just a second all right let's see just kind of with a slight twisting motion having a little bit of struggle the seal is definitely pretty tight make sure we're lubed good and kind of, again with a slight twisting motion and, and this one is fighting me a little bit well, I think I got it now okay that looks it looks pretty good you want to get it in as far as you can get it that way you know you're fully compressed I'm gonna pop it back out I just want to make sure I'm gonna take the outer one back off because I'm struggling a little bit make sure that there's no damage to the seal that looks good and again push it in and slightly twisting it I think that helps a little bit and then get it in as deep as you can get it where it's really bottomed out on the metal of the piston you know right on the edge of the piston that that's good pretty good there all right we'll stick it back in the outer one and again I'm probably going to have to use the tool on it all right all right, here we go. 
good right against the bottom of the tool the inside one is nice and tight that's what I want I'll use a gallon freezer bag put it right in there and this is the way you want it to go into the freezer just like that you know get the intermediate and again I've already put the inside one in lip side down put the outer one on brand new seal all right and same thing we have you know the funnel shape that's on the top we'll lube it up get it nice and wet again you would normally be using transmission fluid and I'll put some here on the piston seals And you can be kind of liberal with the lube. You want it to be nice and lubricated. All right. Looks like we about have it. Now, this one is a little bit hard to put in. Uh, actually, the larger the piston, the harder it is to put in. So therefore, you know, I kind of put it in there a little bit sideways. So, you know, this is already in on this side and I'll slowly try to get the other side in by using the tool and I have to kind of run it back and forth a little bit All right. and it you know it takes a little patience there we go it's starting to go down here now and I'll come back over on this side. All right, we're kind of going in. You can look down in there. You can usually see where, you know, where the seal is hanging up. And there we go. And then, of course, the tool will get hung in there sometimes, so I may have to back it up just a little bit. Get the tool out. There we go. All right, and we're in. And again, you can look at the bottom. You can see where the tool is hitting the standoffs. It's in three places. We're in there. Good. And that's that feels good. Now we'll put the inner uh, sizer in. And this one, of course, you have the the inner taper goes down. And um, but you have to. Flip it over. Just remember now, make sure you're fully down. Flip it over. This case, you want the lips of the, the bottom part of the piston facing you. All right. Take the tool. Lubricate it. And again, you know, the tapered part is going down in two the piston and by using a little bit of a you know rotating motion you can see it kind of threads its way in there and what you want to do is you want to push it right down to the where the tool will actually hit the table and when it does that you will see that the tool is almost flush with the back of the piston but it'll actually be countersunk just a little bit just a little bit And again, you look at it real close. Make sure that your outer tool is hitting those standoffs. And that the inner tool is now just slightly below the edge of the piston. And in this case, we use another gallon bag. And we put it in just like this, upside down. All right. The other ones kind of went in right side up. This one goes in upside down. All right. 
And now we'll put those three in the freezer, just like you see it. All right, I'll bring the reverse piston back over. I'll take my drum. Now this drum is, uh, is destroyed here, and I'm just using this for illustration. This, it's in bad shape. However, the piston hole is fine. So lubricate all in there real good. Make sure that inner seal is lubricated. And what we want to do is drop it right down in there. And you can see it's the tool is now flush with that ledge at the bottom. Now, the way I want to install this is I want to push the piston down. Try not to go more than about an eighth of an inch at a time and alternate, you know, a little bit on one side and then a little bit on the other side. And it's just going to be tight now. Let's see. Now, unfortunately, I moved it probably a little bit too much. And a lot of times when that happens, it gets cocked and it's not going to go in. And that's what looks like what's happened here. So we'll pull the tool back out right here, get caught on the ledge. So we'll pull it back out. Okay, one more time. Let's see how she does. Get it down in there. I'll use this rag, it'll help me a little bit. Okay. Oop. Sometimes when you push one side down, the other side will pop up, so you have to kind of watch for that. I think that's it. Make sure it's all the way in. Now that was a little bit easier. And it does help if I actually had the correct seal on there. I had one, I think it's from a different transmission. I looked back through my stuff and put another seal on it and I noticed the profile was a little bit different. That went in a whole lot easier. Very good. Let's put that aside. We'll bring the other parts back over here. And what we want to do, again, we want to make sure that on the intermediate, the outside is pushed all the way down and the inside is all the way in and slightly countersunk. And you want to put it in the freezer just like that. All right, and then of course the forward, you know, had a little bit of trouble with the inside one. You know, make sure it's still in position and it's all the way down. And again, this one, you know, the, uh, the top side will be facing you. The intermediate, you're looking at the bottom of the uh, piston. All right, and then of course we have the direct and notice you you only have an outer seal protector here because on the direct the lip seal that's for the uh, inner side that that's actually in the drum and of course the seal is already facing down so the uh, piston will go right past it you only need the outer sizer tool goes in the freezer just like that all right well thank you very much we'll be back later and get those installed in the drum. Hi, I'm Ken Collins of Bad Shoe Production. Welcome back to part two of my video showing how to use my new sizer tools. Now in just a second, I'm gonna go over to my refrigerator I have here in the shop. I'll remove the uh, freezer bag that has the direct clutch piston in it. Then come over here to the table 
and install it on the drum. Uh, then I'll probably turn the camera off. I'll go in the house and get the uh, forward clutch piston and the intermediate clutch piston and I'll bring them back into the shop in this little <laughs> styrofoam box here. Hopefully that'll keep it from thawing out and then I'll install those. We'll see how it goes. All right, let me run on over to the refrigerator. Pop the tool off. Perfect. All right, if I try to pull it out now, it probably won't go back in. So you only have a few seconds to do it here. Let me try it. And see, it's already, it's already too late. It's already moved out just enough that I can't get it in there. So you only have kind of one chance. But it did go in there the first time, no problem. Now we'll move on to the next one. All right, let's try the forward. Still, still frozen. I would say in about a minute. You can see it's it's even a little loose in there. Give it about a minute. She'll be thawed out, and you would not be able to put it back in. Like I say, you only have about a minute, a good minute. And understand, under these uh, 500 watt uh, floods that I have here, it's gonna it's gonna take even less time. So far, it's, it's still wiggling. I don't think I have too much longer to go. All right, let's go on to the next one. Let's try the intermediate. Inside just falls right out. The outside will take a little bit of effort because it's really stuck on there. Okay. Perfect. Works good. Now while it's frozen like that, let's go ahead and index the piston. Uh, it has a uh, bleed hole and that needs to be in the 12 o'clock position. So we'll put it just like that. The row of uh, pressure uh, passages right here, that's the 6 o'clock. So the bleed hole needs to be at 12 o'clock, right? Like that. And you can see it's still it's still frozen, goes in there, you know, without any trouble. Um, I would say in about one minute, uh, they will fall out and you will not be able to do that. So, I think we're done. Well, forgive the audio and video quality. I was using a webcam and not my normal video camera, but I believe I got the information across to you. Just remember when you're pulling the uh, uh, piston out of the bag and the tool has dislodged itself, you know, most likely you're going to have to reset it and refreeze it. But if it comes out good, you get the tool off, you just have a very short amount of time, get it down into the drum, and I believe you'll be fine. Well, thank you very much for watching my video, and as always, good luck on your project.